Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's project I'm going to do probably one of the most simple projects that I've done here uh, in my video series on YouTube. Uh, I started not to even video this but then I got to thinking about one of the pleasures of having your own little home hobby machine shop is being able to make your own widgets whether that be a tool, whether that be an adapter, uh, whether that be a repair job for someone or like my last video of actually making some pieces to put together outriggers for an offshore fishing boat. Still waiting on pictures from that but we've had some kind of bad weather in this area and the owner of the boat has not had the opportunity to carry it out uh, since finishing that project for it. But today what I want to do I've got this mounts on the wall got a little quarter twenty post on the end of it I need to connect this to it I need some way to connect the two together now let me explain a little bit right quick what this is this is a camera mount uh, it can either stick to the wall I'm going to screw it to the wall because this will be an outside installation uh, various temperatures from well below freezing to 90s maybe even up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit be on the side of the tin barn so it's going to be hot this is a security camera uh, this is if you're familiar with Raspberry Pis this is a Raspberry Pi Zero if you hold on just a second uh, I'll show you what's inside this box I intended to have these two pieces uh, here on the workbench before I started the video but forgot them but what's inside this is a Raspberry Pi Zero this is the Zero W if you're not familiar with them this is a complete computer uh, called a single board computer SBC it's by the Raspberry Pi Foundation out of England this has uh, a full computer processor runs the uh, Linux operating system also has Wi-Fi built into it in addition inside that little black case this is a camera this is an earlier version of the camera this is the uh, version 1.3 the one that's actually in the box is uh, I think a 2.1 but those are connected with a little uh, ribbon cable and the Raspberry Pi the computer itself that's in there is running the Motion I OS operating system that's the word Motion I OS for operating system which is built and written uh, it's it's a uh, derivative of Linux but it's used to control uh, cameras uh, yeah cameras uh, motion detect this this camera inside this and the software running will detect motion will record it I'm actually recording it to a Raspberry Pi I have here in the in the barn give me just a second and I'll show you that okay this is my uh, we'll call it technical area of the tin barn uh, I see my lunch plate still sitting over there but uh, I have my desktop computer which is up underneath the desk down here a few monitors hooked to it over here on the side are two old laptop uh, screens that I've uh, salvaged out or uh, repurposed as monitors this is the basically the workstation where I do my uh, Raspberry Pi installations and setups uh, but up here on that shelf if you see that little red light let me zoom you in a little bit this right here is the Raspberry Pi 3B this is uh, one of the older Raspberry Pis and it's, it's actually a secret project I'm not even going to tell you about it but this one sitting back here that had the weight on it the weight was just simply because it's so small the cables weighed it down 
But this is another Raspberry Pi 3B. And don't worry about me showing this IP address. That is the uh, IP address assigned to it on my local network. It's not something you can get to it through the web. But what this Raspberry Pi is, is a file server. You've heard of file servers being stuck back in a closet somewhere. Well, this one's on my shelf. It's got a one terabyte uh, SSD connected to it, a uh, solid state uh, hard drive. And that is my file storage for, for out here in the tin barn and also for the uh, uh, my computers in the house. Okay, so now that you know more about uh, uh, Raspberry Pis than you ever cared uh, to hear, or maybe you already knew, it's time to get on with our project. Again, we want to connect. We want to mount this on the outside of the tin barn. It'll, it'll use some screws to mount to, the, to there. And then we want to come up with a way to attach this camera to it. So that I can position it. The positioning is in here. The only cords that will have to be run to this will be a small power cord. Uh, here we go. A little power pack run through the wall to connect to it. As I say, it has wireless internet, wireless Wi-Fi, so it will uh, connect on my internal network uh, wirelessly. So let's get turned to the lathe now, and first thing we're going to do is take a small piece of aluminum like this. This is just a piece of leftover on another project. We'll face off the end, drill and tap it for the quarter 20, and then turn it down to make it a little bit, uh, look a little nicer. We'll part it off, and then this piece will actually glue to the back of the camera mount. All right, I got a short little short piece of uh, scrap stock. Well, I'm not going to call it scrap because it's uh, it's being used for a legitimate piece here. We're going to mount that in the chuck. First thing we'll do is get it a clean face on it. All right, next thing we're going to do is drill and tap for a quarter twenty. And our whole piece that we're going to make is only going to be about an inch long. Uh, so we don't want to go in more than, uh, let's see, probably won't be about three quarters long. So we'll go in about a half inch. My tail sock has a tendency to slide back just a little uh, as it's getting seated, as it's locking down. So what I'm going to do is start the hole, let the tail stock find its position. All right, let's quit moving. Now this is not doesn't have to be so precise on the depth, but I'm going to take my pocket uh, rule. Just come into where I touch off there, zero out the DRO that I have on the uh, on the tail stock, and now we'll go in five hundred thousandths. All right. Now we're going to start it with a two flute taper tap, uh, realizing that the half inch is barely deep enough. For, to get solid threads on here. Turn my RPM down. Got my finger on the stop button. Now we're going to use a bottom tap, which is threaded almost to almost to the bottom. But as I always do, I forgot to taper that hole before I started my first tap. So I'll just use this little countersink here. Clean that out just a little. Now we'll put the bottom tap in. Not sure if y'all can hear it uh, in the video or not, but I've got the 
I've got the barn, uh, the door to the tin barn open. It's such a pretty day today. And the, uh, the Air Force is, uh, is flying maneuvers around the house today. Closest Air Force base is where the crow flies. It's about 25 miles from me. And they fly over quite often here. I'll give that just one more little. Be sure I'm at the bottom. Okay. So now I should be able to get at least a good three eighths of thread into it. Next, we're going to use a turning tool. And I'm going to come up here, set the D, set the Z axis, zero that out right there. Come in a half inch. Not sure if you can see it down here. I'll back out of the way in just a moment. Let me get this snug. But down here is a uh, stop for the uh, cross slide. So I can tighten that in position. And now I'll simply turn this, bring it in each time until I, until I hit the stop. Alright, I'm going to take a quick measurement on that. I want to bring this diameter down to 9 sixteenths, which is 563. It's currently 884. So I'm going to come over here to my DRO. I know you can't see it, it's off camera. But I'm going to set a dimension, uh, 0.884 is what it currently is, minus what I want, which is 0 0.563, means we've got 321 thousandths to go. So on the DRO now, and I've shown this in numerous videos, but all we'll do on the DRO is keep working this down until it comes out to zero. And each time I'm bringing it up to my uh, carriage stop, all right, we've got that cut down to the nine sixteenths. Now I'm going to put a different tool in and chamfer this outside edge right here just a little bit. That's just to remove any sharp, sharp edges. All right, I'm going to take the workpiece out now and turn it around, but I don't want to clamp down. Oops. I don't want to clamp down on this finish right here. So what I'm going to do is uh, put it in a nine, <clears throat> nine sixteenths uh, collet and turn it around so we can part it off. All right, I've turned our workpiece around now and got it in this uh, collet. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, this is a 5C collet. Uh, this one's a 5 8 but what I have in here is 9 16 And it slides through. It's keyed. There's a keyway in it, as you can see right here. But then on the, the back end, is threaded. And so this... Uh, this lock ring has been put on it. And being a six-sided collet holder, it will fit in to the three-jaw chuck on three of the six sides. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, and we're going to part this off 
and pretty much just part it by eye. It doesn't have to be a uh, precise thickness to get my carriage stop out of the way. But I have the parting tool now. And I'm going to come to a thickness here that looks pretty good. This is, we're going to part this off, this end off, and then this piece that's left will be what glues onto the uh, back of the uh, surveillance camera. Turn our RPMs down just a little. And I like to keep, even, even when parting aluminum, I like to keep plenty of lube on it. Now, as far as I'm concerned, parting is probably one of the uh, toughest jobs that a lathe has to do. What we're doing is actually forcing a knife in. Uh, we're not just taking a little bit off the outside turning, but we're forcing a knife into this material. Speed you do this is really dependent on your machine the parting blade and the material that you're parting. Alright, I like to uh, face this end again as well and parting. Not sure what it is but with my lathe, even though I, I know this is at 90 degrees to the material, it still likes to cut just a little bit of a concave. That parting blade, I guess, just uh, gives way just a little bit being forced in there. And again, it cuts just a little concave into the, the piece being held. So again, I like to, to reface that. And that should be a good face. Uh, to hold some glue. Now this is again what's going to be glued onto the back of the camera. The space I have to glue on is a little bit less than the inch width of this. It's closer to 900,000. So we're going to turn this uh, diameter of the outside piece down just a little. Give that a quick measurement. 946. So we've got 46 more thousands to go. And that rolled just a little bit of an edge on the inside here, but we're going to chamfer both the outside and the inside edges. I hope, think my tool will go in. Nope. Okay, I got to do it just a little bit different here. What I got to do is get a thinner tool to go in there, and I need to turn this around in the tool holder. Okay, I could have took this out of the truck, loosened the collet, and and eased the workpiece out just a little bit. But it didn't take much to uh, turn this tool around. This is a thinner tool. So I'll just reach right in with it. All right, I like that. So I'll take the work workpiece out of the collet and meet you back over at the workbench. Okay, here's the piece we just made off the end of this uh, piece of uh, leftover material from another project. That still might make a couple more of these, uh, or at least one more of these. And I probably will make another one off camera uh, because I plan to put several of these surveillance cameras around the, the uh, tin barn and the house. But what we have here, uh, 
This will, of course, screw on. This stand has a lock, and then this will be glued to the back. So what we need to do is clean these pieces good before we glue them. I'm going to be using rubbing alcohol. I usually would usually use acetone to clean something like this. But I know acetone will eat plastic, so I'm not even going to get it near uh, this plastic right here. Got a little bit of rubbing alcohol here, and i got to tell on myself a little bit. I almost always have some type of liquid refreshment sitting on my workbench or sitting on my desk. And the other day I was cleaning some parts and uh, needed some rubbing alcohol to clean them with. Couldn't think of anything to put it in. And I knew butter, but I took one of my empty water bottles, tore the label off of it, carried it in the house, got my bottle of isopropyl alcohol in the bathroom, uh, rubbing alcohol, poured me some in this bottle, came back out here, sat down at my desk over there that you, I sh showed you earlier, and was cleaning some parts. And you can probably guess what I did a few minutes later. Reached over, grabbed this bottle, and took a big old swallow of it. Well, I didn't swallow it. Uh, I spit it out pretty quick. Um, and I told myself right then, I needed to get it out of this water bottle and put it in something else. And that's been a week ago, and it's still in this water bottle. Even with the big red X's on it, I still, I almost did it a second time. And as soon as I get done with this little project right here, I'm going to get it off the workbench, uh, put it away somewhere where I won't unconsciously reach over and pick it up. But we're going to use a little bit of it right now and clean this... Uh, primarily clean the glue surface here. That's a clean towel I have down here setting it on. I'll also clean this back of any oil that might have been on my hands. And I'm going to let that dry for just a few minutes while I go put this back up somewhere where I won't pick it up and take a swallow. Then we'll come back and glue them together. Okay, I'm going to use some of this, uh, it's called Rapid Fuse, but that's just a brand name from DAP. It's super glue, crazy glue, whatever the correct term is for it. This is marked interior and exterior. I would have used the hairspray glue, uh, but it takes 24 hours to cure. This says sets in 30 seconds, cures in 30 minutes. So... Put just a little on there, and I'm normally guilty of using too much glue. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that set. I'm gonna give it a good 30 minutes to set. Then uh, while I'm waiting, I'll probably go ahead and mount this on the outside of the uh, tin barn in the position that I want it. Let that set, and then I'll bring you guys back. Okay, I think we can wrap up this simple little project here in the tin barn now. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, adapter uh, that we just uh, machined, mounted onto the back of the Raspberry Pi camera. Uh, and then here's a couple pictures of it actually mounted on the outside of the tin barn. I'd, I'm not showing you any... Uh, widescreen images of it uh, even though it's a surveillance camera and by the time you got to it to disconnect it you would have already been recorded uh, I still don't care about uh, showing it you know from a distance as far as where it's mounted um, and I'm not going to show you any pictures of what it's actually picking up but I will say that the Raspberry Pi cameras uh, are 1080p resolution uh, they're pretty good high quality, and uh, I've got a another system running over there now. Uh, again, I talk about my friend Harold Waters, Waters on uh, 
uh, amateur redneck workshop. But if you notice in a lot of his videos, when he goes back to his uh, study or office to tell you his bubba jokes, he also, uh, you can see in the background a lot of times, a, uh, a monitor with several surveillance cameras on it. Well, I got that going on over here. Uh, same thing. But I hope you enjoyed this little uh, simple project uh, of simply uh, adapting a generic uh, camera mount to a Raspberry Pi Zero W case. Uh, take care, and I'll see you on the next video.